if you have not been utilizing buses or sins because it's just too complex, too confusing, too overwhelming, it feels like you're having to learn a foreign language. I get it. And this video is about to change your life. One of the concepts that really made me feel like an audio engineer crazy enough was the concept of buses, specifically a vocal bus. It just kind of gave me that extra boost of confidence. I felt like a true audio engineer whenever I figured out exactly what was happening, how to utilize it, how to incorporate it into my own personal workflow. And buses and send tracks are a part of 100% of every single one of my sessions to this day. So this video is really going to be broken down into three main parts. We're going to first cover aux tracks, then we're going to dive into buses, and then we're going to dive into sends. What we're going to do is we're going to explain exactly what they are. And number two, we're going to explain how I actually incorporate them and how you can incorporate them into your own personal workflow whenever you're working within your sessions. So that's enough of me talking on the screen. I want to pull up Pro Tools so I can actually kind of guide you. Let's go. So now that we're in Pro Tools, we can really kind of start to dive into exactly what these, uh, what the aux track is, what the bus tracks are, what the send tracks are, how to incorporate them into your own personal workflow. As a mix engineer, I commonly see sessions that come in like this. Literally all of the plugins are over here on every single track. We're going to fix that by utilizing everything that we're gonna to learn today. None of this is going to matter if your Pro Tools screen does not look like how mine looks. If it doesn't, it's probably gonna look something like this maybe. And how we're gonna fix that is we're gonna go over here and we are going to select inserts A through E, inserts F through J. That's basically gonna be your plugins. And uh, I like to go ahead and I like to have both of those and then we do want to have the IO. So how I got there, just this little icon right here, select those things. You may want to add comments too, but for the sake of this video, you definitely want to do inserts A through E, inserts F through J, sends A and E, S sends F and J, and you definitely want your IO up as well. So as you can see over here in this specific session, without a bus, without an aux track, there's a bunch of plugins, you know, one, two, three, four, four five, five six, 32 seven, total eight. plugins that we've got running right now. Yeah which is not convenient at all and is probably waxing your CPU right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that by utilizing some aux tracks. So point number one, what is an aux track? Basically what an aux track is going to be is it's going to be a central location where you will be taking a bunch of audio tracks and routing them into one single stereo track, AKA your aux track. And its main function is to become a destination to route your audio tracks through. And hang tight, I promise this is gonna make sense here in a sec because we're actually going to go ahead and make an aux track, AKA auxiliary track for our vocal bus. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new track, a new aux track. We're gonna go shift command end if you're on a mac i believe it's control shift in that's going to be your shortcut if you're on a windows and what we're going to create is we're going to create one stereo aux input samples what we're going to title this this is actually going to be uh, a bus for us so this is ultimately going to become our vocal bus so what we just created is an aux track which we're going to utilize as a bus. So this is actually going to lead us right into point number two, which is breaking down our bus tracks. So a bus track is actually a type of auxiliary track. It is an auxiliary track. What we need to do is we need to help our guy, our CPU, and we need to make it a little bit more effective for us because right now, you know, say we need to make an adjustment for the EQ on these vocals and we need to, you know, turn up the high end a little bit. The way that we've got it routed without the vocal bus is, man, we've got to come down here and drag it to every single one. That's, come on, man. You're doing too much. And your CPU don't like you. We're going to take every single one of these audio tracks and we're going to route them out into our vocal bus. And the way that Pro Tools has it set up is this top one's gonna be your input and the bottom one's gonna be your output. We want to control all of our vocals in one central location. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna route, like I said, we're gonna route out into our vocal bus. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have some kind of input for our vocal bus. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to where it says no input. 
We're going to go bus. We're going to, let's just go to bus one and two. And I personally like to rename these so it's a little bit easier to see. We're going to rename this to vocal bus. So now that we've got our vocal bus uh, set up, I'm going to highlight all these audio tracks. And this is just a quick little thing that you can utilize too. So if you want to change multiple outputs or inputs, you just want to come over here and select your, all of your audio tracks that you want to adjust the inputs and outputs for. You'll hold down shift and option. And what we need to do is we need to go, we're going to go out into a, a bus, into our vocal bus, right? So we go bam, bam, click. And we were holding down shift and option, so it changed all of them. So now anything that I put on this vocal bus is now going to affect all of these vocals. So check this out. So here's where we are right now. Great sound, but too complex, too much stuff going on over here. We need to make it a lot more simple. So what we're going to do is instead of having all these plugins and inserts on these, you know, every single track, we're going to conveniently shift all of these plugins to our vocal bus. So I'm gonna quickly do that and move all these plugins up. And the way that I'm doing that right now, I'm holding shift and option and just moving these up to copy these settings. I'm gonna normally keep the auto tune on the actual audio track, personal preference. It's gonna get you a better sound if you do it that way. So now we've got all of these inserts on our vocal bus. We can conveniently remove all of these plugins. Just get rid of all of them. So check out what we just did. We can now control all of these audio tracks conveniently in one central location. So check this out. I'll play it. But I might just have to bring it home. She did woke up and I was already gone. In the space coop, ain't no telling where I'm even at. Different city every week, I think I need a... So you see what's happening there? And that is the power of utilizing a bus track. There's multiple benefits of utilizing these bus tracks. One, the CPU usage. You're not having to pull up 30 plugins. Now we've narrowed down the plugins. We had 32. Now we've got 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We literally trimmed our plugins in half. So our CPU is thanking us right now. Yes, yes. I love you. It's a better session organization. It's a lot easier to just say if you adjusted the compressor on this track. Well, now you've got to drag it down to every single track. You don't want to do that. You want to do it in one central location, which is going to be your bus track. And in our case, our vocal bus. And I personally like to color code things. I normally like to have my vocal bus red. So it's a personal thing. You know, you can you can copy that if you want to. Hey, and real quick before we actually dive into covering the sauce of using the send tracks, which is one of the main reasons why you've clicked here on the video. If you've already been receiving some value and things have started to feel a little bit more simple for you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This is one of the many training videos that are coming soon. And I want to make sure that you get all the tips, all the tricks, all the hacks, all the gems, jewels, all that stuff to give you that complete confidence on your pursuit to becoming an incredible audio engineer. So now let's go ahead and dive into point number three, which is going to be our send and return tracks. I know we've kind of talked more so about the send tracks, but you can't have a send track without a return track. That's gonna be super simple here in a couple seconds. Just take my word, I promise. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a send track. Just kind of follow along here. You know, if, you're, if you've got your session pulled up, you can go ahead and create this and then we'll walk through exactly how we're going to utilize it. This is going to look very similar to what we actually did to create our vocal bus, but we're going to make a new track, shift command N. And in this scenario, we're going to make a reverb send. So right now it looks identical to how we created the vocal bus, right? Which can sometimes be confusing, but they are utilized to do different things. They kind of work the same, kind of not. Let's walk through exactly what we're going to utilize this send track for. So as you can see, you've got our sends over here. We're going to be sending a duplicate signal. And the way that we're going to do it in this specific scenario, we're going to send out a signal on our vocal bus. From this vocal bus, we're going to send a duplicate audio signal into our return track. But the first thing that we need to do, pretty similar to our vocal bus that we created, we need to make a central location to send our send track to. We're going to go down here to bus again. We're going to go to bus three and four, and we're going to rename this thing Reverb. 
So what we have just created is we've created a return track for our send. I typically don't like to have my reverb on my vocal bus. You just don't have complete creative control when you do it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to remove it. And in this scenario, we're going, we have created a reverb send and how we're gonna route things, we're gonna go over here to our sends and we're gonna go here, bus, we're gonna send it out to our reverb return track. And this is gonna pop up for you. And you just wanna set this up to zero. You do that by clicking option and just click. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to add the reverb that we had uh, originally to the send track. So what we have just done with the send track, the way that we had it before, we had the reverb up here. And say, you know, you really like the reverb, but there's just too much low end in the reverb and you want to kind of take that out. What would have happened if we would have added that EQ up here, that would have actually EQ'd these physical vocals compared to now, you've got a little bit more creative control. So anything that you add down here is just affecting the reverb. Say you want, you know, a, a reverb with a little bit of flange. Well, now it's only gonna be affecting your reverb's uh, return track or send track. So what I normally like to do here is I will, uh, I'll keep this, uh, you know, in this scenario, we're using the reverb, we'll keep it 100% wet. And what you can do here with your, on your return track is you'll just kind of dial it back and blend it to taste. So check this out. But I might just have to bring it home She just woke up and I was already gone In the space coop, ain't no telling where I'm even at Different city But I might just have to bring it home She just woke up and I was already gone so as you can see, that's a lot more convenient to just to kind of have ultimate creative control within your sessions. With the bus track, what we've done is we've provided a central location to add our inserts so that we can quickly and effectively, you know, adjust your audio tracks and different things like that. With the send track, what you're doing is you're sending out a duplicate signal out into a return track, which is gonna be in this scenario is going to be reverb, which ultimately gives us the most amount of creative control within our sessions. So another very common sin that I do want to kind of mention here is parallel compression. We can create one more new stereo aux track and we're going to say parallel compression. We are going to walk through the same thing in this scenario. Let's just do bus five and six. Add your parallel compressor of choice, the 1176 by Waves Audio. And basically that's how you would do it. That's how you would create your parallel compression. So you send out a duplicate signal of this wherever you add your send track to and to your return track. And you always wanna set your sends to Unity. And I like to kind of blend mine to taste over here using the fader there. That's how I do all of my send tracks. And let's play what we've got now. But I might just have to bring it home She just woke up and I was already gone In the space coop, ain't no telling where I'm even at Different city but hey, if you're newer to audio engineering or you really want to make sure that you're grasping everything that you need to know in Pro Tools without skipping steps like I did, if you want to prevent that, I've recently just released a brand new in-depth 60-minute video training, Record Radio Ready Vocals in Pro Tools today. It's a 60-minute in-depth training of my exact Pro Tools workflow and frameworks. Man, there's templates, PDF guides, basically every single thing that I wish that I had whenever I first got started that would have saved me years of wasted time, heartaches, frustrations, overwhelms. What I've done is I've linked that down in the description if that sounds like it would be relevant to where you are in your journey. And I think that you're gonna be blown away by the knowledge that you'll walk away with within that 60 minutes. Hopefully this wasn't too complex and hopefully this really simplified it and helped you realize that you are well on your way to becoming a great audio engineer. But hey, I'm checking out. That wraps up this video. I'll catch you very soon. But until then, I'm getting out of here. Peace.